Hi, this is Brian Forrester, and today we're going to be looking at megalithic evidence at Mitla, located in Oaxaca in Mexico. So you can already see the evidence. You see this massive column of basalt. Supposedly the quarry is located more or less a mile in the distance. We were able to actually explore the area of the quarry and were able to indeed establish that the stone is basalt. Now this is going to be in contrast with the other types of construction that we're going to look at. Again, another large basalt column. So here at the bottom you see finely cut and well fitted stone and much rougher work above it. There in the background you see those massive lintels and then here again rough construction and then once again fine work at the bottom. And here very tight fitting basalt stone, no mortar, no gaps whatsoever, and much rougher work above. So we're obviously looking at two different civilizations. And in the case of the church, which uh, we'll be filming in a moment, three levels of construction, three different cultures. So look how tight fitting these stones are. Again, no mortar whatsoever. And this is the church, so the upper work is Spanish colonial, and then lower down recycled stones from a megalithic structure. And here you see a very nicely shaped basalt stone, more or less rubble above. And this is crude construction, so you have the megalithic work, and then you have the Zapotec native people's work, and then you have the Spanish colonial work above. So here, the rough construction of the colonial and Zapotec people, and then the reinstalling of these very large lintels or beams, in this case weighing at least six tons. Now some people are going to say that the finest work would be the beams and that that would be the last level of construction, <clears throat> but likely not true. It is possible that even with a six ton beam, and you don't have to be that sophisticated, that you could pry up one end, put some uh, rubble and stone below, then uh, gently raise the other side a little bit and almost do like a seesaw fashion to build the wall up, having the recycled beam in the place you want it at the very end. Once again, relative rubble below. And there are a series of passages here at Mitla. So again, we're going to see the difference between Zapotec style, which is here, and possibly colonial, and then another one of these massive, conservatively six-ton beams above. They've even had to put a metal bracket around it in order to hold it up uh, in recent restoration. And then here at the bottom, once again, finely fitting stone with relative rubble placed on top of it. They used a volcanic ash as a type of concrete, which you also find in many other locations in ancient Mexico, including the massive pyramidal structures at Teotihuacan. Here again, you see the finely uh, fitted stone in the center. And here, rough work uh, in the lower part of the video, and then finely finished stonework, probably restoration during Zapotec times above. And here, again, rough work. And there you see what was probably a massive beam set into place into the wall. Another one of these columns. This is a relatively short one compared to the others we have been looking at and will be. 
and then here, finely shaped stone on the bottom, and rough on top. Again, finely shaped stone on the bottom, rubble on top, recycled, uh, recycled megalithic stones above, and there's another one of those columns. And this is one of the largest of the beams that we found. I would estimate that this weighs between 10 and 11 tons, and it either fell down or was being placed or being put into place by the Zapotecs. Then here, look at the left-hand side of the building as compared to the right. And once again, you have the fine stone on the bottom and relative rubble above. And now we're going up a staircase. So you see the stones on the bottom were probably recycled by the Zapotex and put into place. And then later other repair work was done above, including plastering the exterior. Some more very fine stone work in the video at this point. And look at the doorway as we go through. A massive beam or lintel across the top and two very uh, fine vertical stones. And these are actually the largest of the lintels. Notice solid stone on the right and then rather crude repair work on the left. And again, rough work and then fine stone work used to repair the corner. And once again, more of these massive basalt columns, all relatively the same shape and size, moved from the quarry, said to be at least one mile away. They were clearly the, um, the posts for a roof at one point in time, but if that was their original purpose, we don't know, likely. And here, the largest of the beams, I estimate one to be somewhere in the region of 18 tons. You can see the repair work there in the center of the screen. And as we move along, once again, we're going to see rough repair work at the end, right there. And here, some fine stone work recycled during Zapotec or colonial times. And likely the original foundation. You see how tightly fitting the stones are as compared to the corner. And at another location nearby, once again, we have these approximate six ton beams very fine foundation work below, cruder work above. And here again, the giant beams put back into place or put into place likely by the Zapotex on top of their rougher wall work. And again, another area of this construction, fine work on the bottom, fine work on the top, crude work in between. Some more buildings that we found nearby, again with the recycled giant lintel beams. And then a final look at the difference between the rougher work on the bottom and the fine beams on top. Again, it is possible that the Zapotecs obviously 
found these giant beams somewhere, uh, maybe on location or at a nearby location, and then were able to build their wall by gradually raising one end then the other end, maybe even an inch at a time, like a, in a seesaw fashion, building their wall until the beams were up to the height they wanted them.